In today's video, I'm going to show you and walk you through how to install a third party SSD in your M4 Mac Mini. Now, it's a fairly simple process. I'm going to walk you through everything, show you how it's done. And if you're comfortable doing this, you'll see in today's video. If you're not super comfortable, maybe stay away from doing this as if you damage anything in the process, you could potentially void your warranty. But again, as I said, it's somewhat of a simple process. I'm going to walk you through everything and whether you're going to watch this to see how to do it in today's video or you're just going to watch this to see if it's something you want to do, you're going to find out. I'm also going to do a full review on the SSD that I have, but I wanted to do this walkthrough first and use the SSD for a week or so just to see how long term it performs. Because again, this is a third party SSD. This is not one direct from Apple, but you're saving a decent amount of money by doing so. And also the read and write speeds on these third party SSDs are much faster than the base model 256 gigabyte SSD that comes, or really I should say storage chip that comes with the base model M4 Mac mini. So without further ado, let's talk about what you need. So of course, you're going to need an SSD first and foremost. Then if your SSD doesn't come with tools, you're gonna need to buy a toolkit. This is the toolkit that I purchased. You only need three different screws. You need a T3, a T5, and a T8 screw. So as I open this, you're gonna see this comes with way more than what I need. But the reason I was okay with it is it comes with screws for different Macs. It comes with screws to open up the Nintendo Switch. And it also comes with things like a magnetic screw pad, which I didn't think I was gonna need until you'll see later on in today's video. I put all the screws on here as I take them out in the Mac Mini, and it just keeps everything very organized. And I've only done a process like this one other time with my M1 MacBook Air. And I do wish I had this because it just makes it to where I can remember where the screws are. They actually call this a memory pad because you can just put the screws, remember where they're gonna be, and they're not gonna move because it is magnetic. So again, it does come with that, and it comes with everything else you need, like the little wedges right here. It comes with some of the spudgers. It actually comes with two spudgers like this, which you're gonna need to take off the clips of the bottom of the Mac Mini. And then of course the screwdriver and a suction cup, which you're gonna need to actually put these spudgers in, which you'll see in a bit. But I just wanted to go through why I got this one. Now again, certain SSDs or storage chips, depending on where you buy them from, may come with the bare minimum tools you need. However, this set, very high quality, it was around 25 bucks when I purchased it. I'll put a link in the description below if you need to buy some tools. And of course, I'm dropping them as I'm talking about it. So before we get started, the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is do a time machine backup of your existing M4 Mac Mini. And then also make sure you log out of your iCloud account. Make sure you unregister programs like DaVinci Resolve. Make sure you do all that so it doesn't create problems down the line with registration or having duplicate IDs. It's just gonna help you in the long run. I actually ended up forgetting to do my DaVinci Resolve, although I remembered to do my iCloud, and I ended up having to reset my DaVinci Resolve key. It wasn't a big deal, but it was something I forgot to do, so figured I would save you time by letting you know, remember to do that before you do this project. So I just got a regular towel to put my Mac Mini on. You may not need a towel, but you need to put it on something and not just put it directly on a table because not only will the Mac Mini move around, but you could scratch it up. So make sure you put it on something. But here I am putting the Mac Mini down. I put the suction cup on and I'm putting one of these triangle pieces in the gap to make sure I have enough to grab that spudger, that wedge and start taking the clips out. Now there are four clips in this top piece and you want to be careful because if you do it too hard, you could crack the actual bottom plastic of your Mac Mini. So this actually took me the longest to do because I wanted to make sure that I didn't crack anything, that I was very careful. And it took me about half the time it did to do this entire process, which is why I cut through it. But I didn't crack anything and I wanted to make sure that I did everything right. So just be aware, take your time and make sure that you're properly getting the clips up. And once you do, it's pretty easy from there.
The first screw head you're gonna need is the T5, and that's gonna be used for most of the screws today. So you're gonna see I take up the screws around the edges of the Mac Mini to get the first part of the fan out. They all use the T5 screw take that off. I'm not undoing any of the ribbon cables because I plan on putting it back together really quickly. So I put them over to the side over here. And then on the next set, I still use my T5 for a few of the screws. And then the last two screws, I end up using a T3. And those are the only two screws you're going to use a T3 for. Once you take that out, you're going to see that 
it's pretty simple. You only needed to take those three layers out and the SSD is now exposed. So first thing you're gonna get is your T8. This is the only screw that's going to require the T8. It's holding in the SSD NAND chip. So you're gonna unscrew that and take it out. Now here is what the two SSD NAND chips look side by side. As you can see, they look a little bit different, but the overall configuration is the same. There's one NAND chip on the front and one NAND chip on the back. The circuit boards look a little bit different on these storage chips. There's obviously a sticker on the third party one where there's no sticker on the original one, but I'm going to now put the third party SSD in and I'm gonna put the original 256 gig away, but I'm gonna keep it. Definitely don't throw it out because you may need it down the line, whether you're gonna uninstall this SSD down the line or maybe just something happens to the SSD and you need to put it back to the stock version. I would keep it, no reason to get rid of it. Now I'm gonna fast forward putting everything back together and let's talk about installing the firmware on the SSD. Now I have a link in the description below for the firmware you need to download. You're also going to need another Mac in order to do this. So I used my M3 Pro MacBook Pro and I used a Thunderbolt 3 cable, a really short one as you can see right here, just to connect my M3 Pro to the Mac Mini. Now when you plug the Thunderbolt cable into the Mac Mini, you need to make sure you plug it into the middle one that has the Thunderbolt icon on top of that. That is the port that is used for this DFU restore. Now once I plugged it in, my computer automatically recognized that it needed to do the DFU restore as you could probably see. And the first thing you wanna do is hit the option button before you hit the OK button. That way you can choose what actual firmware you use. And then you're gonna to wanna to use the firmware that you downloaded from the link I have in the description below. And this whole process takes around 20 minutes. Now, once I was done with all of this, I hooked up my Mac mini to a monitor and it booted up like a brand new computer. Now, the first thing I did, instead of setting everything up, filling everything out, I actually did my restore from my time machine, which saved me a little bit of time just because it put all my apps on everything. It made the process way simpler. That took about another 10, 15 minutes, but then I was able to use my computer as I was before. I did have to re-input some of my passwords. I had to re-put my registration key for DaVinci Resolve, but at that point, I was able just to get going. And of course, I did a time machine from a computer that only had a 256 six gig drive and I just put a two terabyte drive in so there was tons of space on the machine. So that's how to install your third party SSD in the M4 Mac mini. Now if you have any questions let me know in the comments below. I also have a link below to the SSD that I used. It is available on Amazon so you do have your buyer protections versus some of the other SSDs out there that you do have to go to third party websites. Not to say that those are bad you just don't have the same kind of protections that you do on Amazon so that's why I went ahead with this version. Also have a review coming out on this SSD drive storage chip soon. I just wanted to use it for a little bit. So I will put the link to that video when it comes out in the description below as well. So that's it for today's video. My name's Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.